Hi guys, this is Denise with Crates with Love, and I'm back to show you another project using Cricut's tote bag as fabric, so we can use it with the infeasible inks. Now I had bought the large size, which is a 19 inch by 14 inch, and I made a summer vibes project, and I put it in a picture frame. Now today, I've cut out just a section out to put labels on this cute little container, or it's a metal container. So let's go to my computer and to follow along. Okay, so before I take you to Design Space, I wanted to show you this was the file that I made last time. So this project is similar in that we'll be using the same materials, but to make a different project. I really liked how that one turned out. Okay, so let's go to Design Space, and then since we are going to be using two different materials, we want to make sure that we set them up correctly. So if I was to click on Make It, I notice that this is where I need to make some changes before I select my fabric settings. I want to make sure that I turn the mirror on for the bottom two mats. Since this is an infusible ink project, you need to make sure that you mirror, especially if there's words. Now, the file on the right, I want to move down because the two pieces of infusible ink I have, we want to be able to line them up to help save on materials. So we always have scraps left over from our projects. Now we'll, let's see, okay, okay, so here we can click on continue, and now it's going to want us to choose the fabric. I've actually not cut the tote bag fabric before with my Cricut, so we're going to learn this part together. Now, I don't think it's going to be the polyester bonded because that uses a fine point blade and I really wanted to cut it with the rotary blade. So I think I'll go ahead and go with cotton and add more pressure and we'll see how this works. And if it doesn't work, well, we have more tote bag fabric left over. All right, so we are good to go. It's telling us to load our mat and load our tools. So after we cut our fabric, I'll come back over to Design Space and show you how to switch it to Infeasible Ink. All right, let's go ahead and go over to my Cricut. Okay, so I'm going to add my tote bag fabric with my brayer and ensure that it's smooth. I already have my rotary blade inserted, so we'll load the mat and then we'll hit go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and unload our mat. And it looks like it sort of cut with some gaps. Just trying to peel carefully and see what we got going here. So it cut a lot. So I might be able to use the true control blade to cut the rest. Now, probably what I should have done in this case is before I unloaded my mat, I could have lifted the fabric, and if it looked like it did now, then I could have pressed go for one more cut. But since I forgot that part, I'll try to save what I can.
Now it's possible we would want to select a heavier fabric like a canvas instead. I'm going to go ahead and just peel it back and then I can put it directly on my cutting mat so I can protect my Cricut mat. So just a couple little slices here and we should be good to go. I guess you could call this going with the flow. trim a couple of these little threads off here. Okay, so now we'll go back to the computer and I'll show you how to change the material to infusible ink. Okay, so we're now back at Design Space and I need to change from my cotton setting to infusible ink. Now to do this, select the drop down arrow to the right of cotton. And now I already have infusible ink set as a favorite. If you want to save it as a favorite, select browse all materials and locate it and then click on the star to the right of the infusible ink transfer sheet. And it'll be easier for next time. All right, so once we have that selected, We'll now switch to our fine point blade so we can finish our project. Now while this is cutting, I'm going to set my Easy Press 2 to 385 degrees. And when we first press it, it'll be 15 seconds. That'll be the time where we want to just smooth out any wrinkles or to draw in any moisture from the material. And then once we add the, the Cricut uh, ink transfer sheet, then we'll select 385 again, and but we'll do it for 40 seconds. So now these are the settings for the Easy Press 2. If you have an Easy Press 1, make sure to check with Cricut's help page. And they have a little drop down selection where you can choose which Easy Press you have and which materials you're working with. And it'll give you all of the, the detailed instructions that you need. It's super, super helpful. And if you miss one of my previous videos, I actually show you step by step how to save Cricut's help page to your telephone or your computer. So we can load the next mat and while it's cutting I'll go ahead and speed through the weeding for you. Before I do that I want to show you how this is the correct way to take off your ink transfer sheets from your Cricut mat. I find it very helpful to do it this way. So I'll load the material. This is going to be for the letters that's going to go on top of the other layer. All right, I'll start the weeding and I'll see you back here in a bit.
Okay, so I've got all the letters, you know, pressed evenly with that other layer, and that's what's going to enable us to have the two layers together. It's a little bit more time consuming. You know, if you were to have used a cursive um, font, then it would have been a little bit easier. Okay, so what we're going to do is preheat. And again, this is where I was saying earlier that it helps get the wrinkles out and also draw out any moisture. You want to put the cardstock down and then your material and then butcher paper. This is where we're going to do it for the, the 15 seconds. Remove the butcher paper. You want to let that cool a little bit. I'm just using the lint roller to make sure that there's no fibers or hair stuck on there. We want to cool off a little bit because with this, I'm going to be pressing it straight over. Excuse my head getting in the way. But you want to just make sure that you line it up as straight as you can. And it's got that, the sticky part of the transfer sheet, so it's going to stay there somewhat. But you just want to be really careful not to move it until you get that heat press on it. And then, of course, once the heat press is on it, you don't want to move the heat press. Otherwise, it'll ghost or mess up the image or smear it. So, there we go. Okay, so 385, 40 seconds. Put the easy press straight down and do not move it. You just want to do light pressure. I'm barely pushing down on it. I love having this little easy press. It's so cute. When you're working on something small, why big, you know, why drag out the big one? So here you want to let it cool. I'm going to carefully move it to the side, very carefully, so that nothing adjusts, and that way I can get started on the second one. So it's funny here I use my brayer <laughs> instead of my lint roller. I didn't even realize it until I was having some video issues and what actually took me longer to get this video out was because I had so many sound issues. Anyway, so it, was, it kind of cracked me up that I actually used the brayer instead of the lint roller. So I'm letting it cool down again and press it straight down, ink side down, transfer sheet up. Try to line it up as straight as possible. And that cardstock is just to protect my Cricut mat so no ink goes through it. And there's the butcher paper. And then again, I'll just move my hand very carefully. Put the heat press straight down. 40 seconds at 385. Again, just light pressure. Do not move the heat press. And straight up. And we'll move the other one over. Okay, and it's completely cooled down. This is where you want to peel it back. And if you see those little pieces, the R and the and the B, even though they seemed really loose, you want to move them and just make sure that you move them with your tweezers and not your fingers, just in case. And then a little bit of it kind of stuck to my cardstock paper, which is really no big deal. It came up super easy with my little spatula tool. Anyway, it turned out so cute. And that's the idea is I'm going to be putting them on the outside of that metal container. So vibrant. Okay, so let's, the other one is cooled down. Same thing. Anything still on there, you're going to remove it with your tweezers and not your fingers, just in case. And this one stuck a little bit as well. And there we go. So that see you see the ink that got on there. Had I not used that cardstock, that would be on your easy press mat, and you don't want that. Okay. So I decided. Um, I thought about it actually for for a day. I kind of got. I had to do some other errands and stuff, and I came back to this, and I was like, you know. I wanted to put felt on the back to give it a little bit more of a stability factor. The reason why is I'm not going to, I'm not going to be using, you know, the herbs and the tools on this metal container all year long. It's kind of a seasonal thing for me. So in order to make it to where I can 
take it off and use something else, I'm just going to tack it in four points with just a little bit of uh, glue gun. So that's why I added the felt. That way it would never tear through on the actual infeasible ink part of the fabric. So I glued the felt on with uh, just a glue stick. You could use really any glue for that. And then I had this braided trim on hand and I really like using it because it gives that little frayed effect. So I'm just using my glue gun here. By the way, this is my favorite glue gun. Having no cord in the way is awesome. I use it all the time and I've got a battery backup. So I've always got a battery rear and a go. So I just love it, especially for projects that you're working on a long time. But it's also super good for those quick things like <laughs> You're like, okay, I need to glue something. And it takes like, no kidding, 30 seconds to heat up and you're good to go. Anyway, so I'm just adding this braid on there for the trim. I love glue strings. <laughs> and just finishing up the other half. glue strings I'm trying to keep the glue gun out of the way for y'all to see but I think it kind of messed up my angle on part of the braid but it's all right just gives it more personality So I'm just going to add the last little bit of glue there. You see me there just turning off the glue gun. So the only thing left to do is just trim it up to about the same length as the one that I had previously made. And kind of combing out the braid, if you will, just separating the little strings to give it that little bit of frayed look. I hope you like this project as much as I do. I think my biggest takeaway from this is I, I want you all to kind of think outside the box and, you know, you can use until I have a feeling Cricut probably is going to come out with a lot more blanks in the future and you never know, maybe they'll give us some fabric options, which I think would be awesome. Um, because if you're like me, there's just <laughs> the sky's the limit, right? If you can sew, sew. If you can craft, craft. If you can, you know, there's just so much creative things you can do when you have material. And I liked doing it this way. And, you know, Cricut bag, tote bags are only a certain size. So, but my aim with this is to show you how many different projects we can get out of it. 
in the video there I was just showing how what I'm going to do is put a vase or a, a glass of water in there with some herbs and I already have some tools that my mom let me borrow uh, from her yard she had some garden art going on and I think it was actually my dad's garden art but they're letting me borrow it uh, for this project cute little shovel on a cute little rake Anyway, so I did tack these on with just four different spots with the glue gun in the back. That way I can remove it very easily for any other, you know, I can stick something else on that little container or use it for, for something else. All right, and I'll be showing a picture here in just a few of what the final project did look like. So be sure to come back. I have more projects to use with the Cricut bag, uh, tote bag material.